so here we've got a rod and um, gives us some code words there. It says it's a slender rod. So that's important for when we get ready to calculate the moment of inertia of the system. Uh, and it's got a certain mass to it. Um, it's somehow it's already in motion when we're looking and it says find the tangential and normal components of reaction at pin O on the rod and the angular acceleration of the rod. Okay, so we've got quite a lot to find. And in fact, this time we will be using all three of our equations. Now, this one, number nine, is very similar to number 11, which I'm going to record next and I'll post it next in order in eLearn because it's probably useful to watch them back to back. This one I'm going to work and when we get ready to do the summation of the moments, I'm going to do it around the center of mass on this one. And on the other one, I'm going to do it around the actual pivot um, as is given so that you can see the difference because both these problems are real, real similar. All right. So our pivot point um, is um, here. So let's get some forces labeled on here. So I'm going to say that my tangential component for what the axle is doing is here. And I'm going to say that the normal component for my axle is here. Okay. Now these aren't X's and Y's. We can make them whatever direction, positive or negative, we want to. That's kind of one of the nice tricks about doing it this way. My actual center mass is over here, and the distance across here is 0.15. Um, oh, I just covered up our moment, though. That's not cool. 0.15 right there. And, of course, then so we've got mg acting in there just like that. And those are the only forces that we've got. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the moment of inertia about the center of mass. So the amount of the mass, they tell us, is 30. Okay, the moment of inertia for the rod about its center of mass is 1 12th ml squared. Okay, 1 12th ml squared. And we put some numbers in there. We got 1 12th onto 30, onto 0.9, double check that, squared. And so then the moment of inertia about the center <clears throat> turns out to be 2.025. And, you know, I, I would keep, you know, four sig figs on these things and carry them through. That'll be plenty while you're doing these equations. All right. <clears throat> Well, let's jump down to our moment equation while we're in the neighborhood, at least I am over here, and look at our moments. So we have, we're going to be pivoting around the center of mass. All right. So this turns into a G and this turns into a G. So around the center of mass, I don't have any moment generated by ON. I do have a moment generated by OT, no moment generated from the weight. And so all we have to deal with is OT in terms of direct forces. And so OT is going to create a negative moment, OT, and it's out there at a distance of 0.15. Now, there's a moment acting, okay, so the axle's doing something, and that's positive, so we need to put a positive 60 on here, and that's going to be equal to 2.025 alpha, okay? I've got two equations and two unknowns, all right? Let me rewrite this just a little bit so it looks a little bit prettier. Let's put minus 0.15 OT plus 60. And that's 2.025 alpha. Okay, so I'm going to put a pin in this. We're going to get back to it.
All right. Let's come up to our summation of the normal components of force. We only have one normal component or one force in the normal, what we've called the normal direction, and that, and that is ON. Okay. So we can get to that pretty easy. We're going to say ON is M omega squared. And then R here is the R from the uh, point of interest to the uh, center of mass. Okay. Double checking my notes. Hang on. Yeah. All right. So O in, put in what we've got. And what we've got is 30. And it was it's moving at an angular velocity of six. Somehow. I don't, I don't, I don't know how that happened. And our radius here between the center of mass uh, and the point of rotation regarding omega is 0.15. So O in turns into 162. And of course, that's Newton's. Okay, let's get the last equation in here. So these are the tangential ones. Uh, yes, the tangential ones. And so think about these as the verticals. Okay, the verticals. So that means I've got OT up. And mg is down, so I've got that right there. Then I've got my m alpha r, and I've got to decide plus or minus, plus or minus. Which one do I have to use? Well, here's how we make that call. So up is positive. We've chosen that. And um, a rotation like this is also positive. So my sine of my alpha and the sine of my a values are in alignment. So I can just choose the positive on here. I don't need to worry about um, changing this thing out in any way. Okay, so let's get some numbers on here. So we've got OT minus 30 onto 9.81, and that's equal to 30. And I'm going to put R on there, and R is still 0.15. And then my alpha. Okay. Okay. Well, that actually worked out pretty good because look at this. I got an OT here. I got an OT here. I got an alpha here, and I got an alpha there. So I've got two equations and two unknowns. So I'm in pretty good shape. Um, in terms of trying to solve that. And so what I did, I just put it into calculator infinity, cranked out the numbers, and I got that OT. Whoa. <laughs> I got that OT. Turned out to be 320.7. Okay, and I would, I would truncate that to 36 fig, so I'd call it 321. And then... Um, Alpha turned out to be 5.87. Okay, this of course is Newton's, and this second one is radians per second squared. Okay. Okay, and um, so again, just to sort of recap, uh, okay, but this is the same stuff we've been doing all along. So we look at our forces. we got to choose what we're going to call tangential, what we're going to call normal. Um, it's very helpful when you're picking that point to, to try and say, uh, so what, what's rotating here? And where's my center of mass? So if I'm rotating like this, I got a center of mass over here. It, it, this is a good choice for normal because that's the direction of my centripetal acceleration. Okay. Um, the rest is kind of arbitrary, but and, and as long as you're consistent, it'll work out just fine.